On July 2, 2010, Rick Caballero set a world record with a wind-driven cart named Blackbird, traveling downwind at 2.8 times the velocity of the wind. It traveled downwind faster than the wind. While there's endless discussion of whether Blackbird can or does work, whether or not it achieves velocities greater than the wind, I consider this settled by the North American Land Sailing Association test reports linked in the description below this video. In a nutshell, Blackbird's rear wheels drive a propeller through a bicycle chain. The propeller thrust pulls the cart forward just as a propeller pulls an airplane, but the tailwind adds additional velocity to the cart while the propeller provides enough thrust to overcome all forces resisting cart motion. Think of an airplane moving through an air mass. Its velocity over the ground equals its velocity through the air mass. Now maintain the same airplane velocity through the air mass, but move the air mass as well. Introduce a tailwind. Now the airplane's velocity over the ground is its velocity through the air plus tailwind velocity along the ground. It's moving faster than the wind. Blackbird does the same. Its propeller pulls the cart through the local air mass. If the air isn't moving, the cart's velocity over the ground equals the cart's velocity through the air. But there's a tailwind, so the local air mass is moving along the ground in the direction of cart motion. So the cart moves along the ground at the wind velocity plus the cart's velocity into the moving air mass. The two velocities add, so the cart moves along the ground at greater than the velocity of the tailwind. It moves downwind faster than the wind, about twice the wind velocity in this animation. But this is just an animation and questions arise. Does the animation reflect the behavior of a real machine capable of traveling downwind faster than the wind? And if so, are there limits to the cart velocity for a given wind velocity? And if so, what determines those limits? We'll address these questions beginning with a conceptual model and a physical model of it that demonstrates that a simple mechanism can achieve velocities greater than the wind. The conceptual model is an extension of Rick's yo-yo example in his St. Francis Yacht Club presentation linked in the video description. The physical model works, and that's encouraging, but it doesn't clarify the performance limits. So we'll analyze the conceptual model and find that its performance, the maximum ratio of cart to wind velocity, is limited by the mechanism's efficiency. But on the surface, the conceptual model doesn't look much like Blackbird. So we'll introduce an analytical model of Blackbird that matches Blackbird's test performance and show that this analysis predicts essentially the same performance as the conceptual model. Or looking at it the other way, show that important things learned from the conceptual model are applicable to Blackbird. Finally, we'll exercise the Blackbird analysis to explore its sensitivity to several design parameters and show that Blackbird is a well-optimized design. Let's start with the conceptual model. Here's a stripped-down version of Blackbird that doesn't include the chain drive or propeller. Add a line to pull the cart and connect it to a parachute that's large enough to travel essentially at wind velocity. The parachute is pushed by the tailwind, which has a velocity of VW, and the cart moves at the velocity VC, which is equal to VW and can't be greater. If the cart went faster than the wind, it would overtake the parachute and the line would go slack. But we want the cart to go faster than the wind. Say we devise a way for the cart to haul in the line, pulling the cart toward the parachute. Let's use a winch drum mounted to the wheel's axle to do this. The winch would shorten the line between the cart and the parachute, pulling the cart toward the parachute, much as an airplane in Blackbird move forward in the air mass. The parachute always moves at the velocity of the wind, so the winch would increase cart velocity over the ground above that of the wind by the winch pull-in rate, VP. VP is the analog of an airplane's airspeed, and it's also the incoming air velocity as seen by a driver in the cart. Now the cart's ground velocity, VC, is VW plus VP. This animation illustrates what's happening. The winch hauls in the line, pulling the cart toward the parachute, shortening the line from the cart to the parachute, and increasing the cart velocity above the velocity of the wind. The cart's moving faster than the wind. Let's consider the case of a winch drum that's one-half the drive wheel diameter. 
The drive wheel circumferential velocity is the cart velocity, Vc. So the winch drum circumferential velocity is one half of this, or Vc over two, since it's a two to one winch. Vp is Vc over two. The winch is pulling in the line at Vc over two, pulling the cart toward the parachute at Vc over two. Since the parachute is moving with the local air mass, the cart is advancing in the air mass at Vc over 2, just as Blackbird's propeller was pulling the cart into the air mass in the earlier animation. The cart velocity is now the velocity of the wind, Vw, plus the pull-in velocity, Vp, which is half of the cart velocity. And rearranging things a bit, Vc is now 2 times Vw. The cart is moving downwind at twice the wind velocity. We've achieved downwind faster than the wind, with the cart moving at twice the wind velocity. This is only possible because the rotating wheels drive the winch, which hauls in the line. Here's a physical model with a 2 to 1 winch, just pulling the line by hand. The cart moves at twice the velocity of the end of the line. And here's an experiment using a shop fan and a parachute to pull the line. The cart overtakes the parachute, moving at twice the parachute velocity. The parachute collapses when the cart makes up when the parachute risers. Granted that the parachute in this experiment is smaller than needed to reach full wind velocity. I tried a larger parachute, but the wind cross-section was too small and the larger chute was unstable. But the experiment does suggest that the conceptual model has merit. There's no question that the winch kinematics produce a cart velocity twice the parachute velocity, and there seems little question that this ratio would hold at a higher parachute velocity. Comparing this with the earlier propeller animation, the similarity is obvious. We've just used a winch to do the same thing that the propeller did. The hardware is different, but the effect is the same. At this point, we might claim success, since we've demonstrated a concept and physical model that achieves a cart velocity greater than the velocity of the wind. It's difficult to argue that the physical model can't work. The experiment shows that it does. And, its success suggests that it satisfies physical laws, since it wouldn't work if it didn't. Just the kinematics of the model suggest how and why it works. The winch hauls in the line, pulling the cart toward the parachute, but the parachute is moving with the wind, so the cart velocity over the ground is the sum of the haul-in and the wind velocities, which is always greater than the wind velocity. Now let's extend this kinematic analysis by adding and analyzing the forces involved. If the cart is moving at a downwind velocity greater than the wind, there are two primary forces that resist cart motion. The first is aerodynamic drag, which we'll call FD, the force required to pull the cart through the air mass. The second is an equivalent friction force, FF, which combines losses from wheel bearing friction and tire deformation. Let's define FR, the total resistance force, which is the sum of FD and FF, just to simplify the following discussion. The graph shows FD and FF combined to give FR the red curve, which is plotted against the cart to tailwind velocity ratio VC over VW, which is the system figure of merit. Note the values of FR for varying cart velocities as shown in the table, which are taken from the Blackbird analysis. For the cart at twice the wind velocity, VC over VW equals 2, the total resistance is 9.4 pounds, and it's 11.3 pounds for the cart at three times wind velocity. These forces are surprisingly low for a cart the size and weight of Blackbird, and this speaks well for the design's drag and friction control. Let's start with what we know so far. If the parachute exerts a line tension Ft on the cart, and with the forces shown, Ft must equal Fr. But this isn't complete. We need to add another force. We need to add the reaction force, Fdw, the force at the drive wheel to ground interface that drives the winch. Just for clarification, the line force at the winch drum is Ft, since the line just passes over a shiv. Now we can analyze the forces on the cart. Again, considering a winch drum that's half the wheel diameter, Fdw is one half of the line tension Ft, because the winch has a two to one mechanical advantage. The wheel force Fdw has to be only one half of Ft to react Ft at the winch drum. Since Ft equals Fr plus Fdw, we see that Fr is also Ft over 2. For this 2 to 1 winch design, the resistance force and wheel reaction forces are equal and their sum is Ft, so the external forces balance. 
It's essential that the winch provide a mechanical advantage since the line tension must balance the ground contact force, FDW, plus the resistance force, FR. So FDW must always be less than FT, which implies a mechanical advantage greater than 1. But even allowing for a very long massless line and a very large massless parachute capable of reacting the FT, we're still one step shy of a complete system. We haven't considered the efficiency of the winch mechanism. We haven't considered friction losses in the winch. Friction losses in the winch reduce its effective mechanical advantage, giving up some of its output force for a given input force, with this reduction in output force due to friction losses. Using the symbol eta to denote efficiency, for the winch, eta is the ratio of real output force, FT, to the theoretical output force for a perfect winch. Real machines always have an efficiency less than one, so the real output force is always less than the theoretical by a factor of eta. For our two to one perfect winch, the output force, FT, is twice the input force, FDW, or as shown here, FDW equals FT over two. If we apply and efficiency, eta, and calculate FT for a given FDW. FT equals eta times 2 FDW, decreasing the winch's effective mechanical advantage. Going the other way, for a given FT, FDW equals FT over the quantity 2 eta, which is the form we'll use. Substituting this expression for FDW, we can solve for FT as a function of FR and eta. Note that this expression blows up for 8 equals 0.5. FT would be FR over 0. The line tension would have to be infinite for this efficiency. This is a plot of line tension versus efficiency for Blackbird's resistance, FR, in a 10 mile per hour wind using the formula for FT for the 2 to 1 winch. The line tension for efficiency is much less than 0.6, climbs dramatically, suggesting 0.6 is a reasonable minimum efficiency for the 2 to 1 parachute model. So far we've considered only a 2 to 1 winch, but the Blackbird analysis suggests that velocity ratios of 3 times wind velocity, or even a little more, are feasible. So let's extend the winch model for any velocity ratio. The only thing missing to completely generalize the parachute model is to consider a range of winch drum to drive wheel diameters, which we'll call R. R for the 2 to 1 winch we've been discussing is 1 half. For this value, VP, the winch haul in velocity, is R times VC, or 1 half the cart velocity, as we've seen. Solving for VC, we get VC equals VW over the quantity 1 minus R. So the 2 to 1 winch VC is VW divided by 1 half equals 2 VW, as we got before. For R equals 2 thirds, VC equals 3 VW, a velocity ratio of 3. And FDW is now R times FT over eta. As R gets larger, the force FDW required to react the line tension FT increases and the mechanical advantage decreases. This is important since the secret to the mechanism working is achieving a significantly high mechanical advantage to produce a large enough line tension to react to all the forces resisting forward motion. We now have enough information to provide a generalized solution for the parachute model, solving for line tension FT as a function of the resistance force FR, the winch drum ratio R, and the winch efficiency eta. Combined with the expression for VC as a function of VW, we can predict model performance over a wide range of design parameters. Again, FT blows up, it goes to infinity, when eta equals R. Let's plot the results of this model. We've already seen the model's behavior for a range of efficiencies for R equals one half. Let's expand this for a range of R. The graph plots line tension versus winch efficiency for four values of R corresponding to velocity ratios, VC over VW, of 1.5, 2, 3, and 4. The velocity ratio of 2 is for the 2 to 1 winch we've been discussing. Note that VC over VW equals 1 over the quantity 1 minus R. The important message is that the efficiency must increase for higher velocity ratios, and there's a minimum of efficiency for each velocity ratio. The minimum efficiency is loosely defined as the point on a curve at which the line tension begins to rise rapidly rapidly approaching a singularity where the line tension becomes infinite when the efficiency equals R. 
Now let's look at the full Blackbird analysis, ultimately comparing its results with those from the conceptual model. The full Blackbird analysis is based upon the same free body diagram as the parachute model. The main difference is that all of the parachute model analysis was performed for steady state, the point at which cart acceleration is zero and the cart is stable at its maximum velocity. The full analysis uses the same forces to predict cart acceleration, integrating this acceleration to predict a velocity profile beginning with the cart at wind velocity and increasing until the cart reaches steady state at a multiple of wind velocity where the cart acceleration is zero. This is the summary of the analysis, including the typical fixed parameters, the most frequently varied parameters, including wind speed, the chain drive ratio and propeller pitch, the propeller model, and the analysis output. In general, the same symbols are used for the parachute and blackbird models to highlight the similarity between the models. These two graphs are the primary analysis output. This one plots the velocity ratio, Vc over Vw, versus time. The orange line is the 2.8 times wind velocity record value measured during a 10 second interval at about 80 seconds into the run. The blue line is the analysis prediction for Vc over Vw throughout the run. The graph plots the cart ground velocity, Vc, versus time into the run. Again, the orange line is the recorded test data, and the blue line is the analysis prediction. The baseline analysis parameters are set for the prediction to pass through the center of the 2.8 times wind velocity record data, and they are set for the prediction to roughly match the slope of the velocity test data at the record data point. Note that the analysis predicts that a slightly higher velocity ratio might have been reached if the run had continued for another 30 or so seconds. The baseline analysis design uses a wind velocity, VW, of 10 miles per hour, the nominal wind velocity for Blackbird's record run. Analysis results are sensitive to the chain drive ratio, RC, which is the ratio of the propeller to wheel rotational speeds. RC is set by the chain position on the sprocket cluster and can't be changed during a run. RC is always less than 1. The propeller shaft speed is always less than the wheel rotational speed. While RC is related to the parachute model winch drive ratio R, it's only a portion of the equivalent R for the Blackbird analysis. The effective total R for the Blackbird analysis includes the effects of propeller pitch as reported here as the ratio of two velocities, VP over VC. Let's change the value of RC to get a feeling for its performance sensitivity. Increasing RC above the baseline value increases performance slightly before rapidly reducing performance. Resetting the baseline value, then decreasing RC immediately degrades performance. This graph illustrates the performance sensitivity over a roughly 2 to 1 range of RC. The red circle indicates the baseline operating point, which predicts a velocity ratio of 3.02 if the run extended to steady state, a bit over the 2.8 recorded for the record run. Increasing RC slightly predicts a maximum velocity ratio of 3.05, not much of an improvement over the baseline assumptions. So, making the assumption that the baseline Blackbird parameters are reasonably close to Blackbird's design, it seems that Blackbird's setup was near optimum for the record run, and that a velocity ratio just a bit above three times wind velocity might even have been achieved with a little longer run. Let's look at similar curves for a range of wind velocities from 8 to 16 miles per hour. We might draw two conclusions from these curves. First, it appears that the maximum velocity ratio, Vc over Vw, increases with increasing wind velocity, suggesting that the greater tailwind delivers more power to the cart. Second, the optimum chain drive ratio, RC, is about the same for all of these wind velocities. This is good, since the chain sprocket cluster setting is fixed before the run, and performance can be optimal over a range of wind velocities at runtime. Again, Blackbird seems a well-conceived design. But the analysis predicts a performance limitation not seen in this graph. Let's look at analysis output for a wind velocity of 12 miles per hour with a chain drive ratio, RC, at about optimum. 
the analysis predicts a velocity ratio of 3.23, a little greater than the baseline performance for a 10 mile per hour tailwind. But note this highlighted cell. Mu dW is the wheel to ground coefficient of friction needed to prevent wheel slip. A little research suggests that this coefficient of friction is probably no more than about 0.7 and certainly not greater than 0.9 for typical tires. The cell first highlights above 0.7. So this operating point might result in wheel slip since the required coefficient of friction is 0.84. We can eliminate this potential problem by decreasing RC until the coefficient of friction drops to 0.7. And this lowers the velocity ratio slightly to 3.2. Doing the same for a wind velocity of 14 miles per hour leads to a slip limited velocity of 3.17. If the slip limit is valid, this suggests that the improvement in performance with increasing wind velocity isn't quite as great as suggested from the original graph. I say, if the slip limit is valid, since I've seen no reports of Blackbird experiencing wheel slip. If slip were encountered, it would probably be evidenced by stick slip behavior and some juddering experienced by the driver a slip caused a little deceleration, then regaining traction again, accelerating the cart. The slip criterion is based upon several Blackbird design assumptions, particularly its weight distribution, and while it seems likely that there is a point at which the wheels could slip, the prediction here might be conservative. But assuming the slip criterion, the graph now looks like this, where the dashed portions of the curves violate the slip criterion. Excluding these operating regions, the graph looks like this, indicating the slip limited maximum velocity ratio and suggesting that a lower drive ratio might be needed for higher winds. At this point, the analysis predicts that Blackbird should be capable of velocity ratios approaching or a bit more than three for wind velocities over 10 miles per hour and over two for wind velocity as low as eight miles per hour. Downwind faster than the wind should be easily accomplished for a wide range of test conditions. Before looking a bit more into the sensitivity of Blackbird's performance to several other parameters, let's compare the analysis predictions with the parachute model. This graph summarized the parachute model's performance for a range of velocity ratios and mechanism efficiency. Now let's plot some Blackbird analysis points on the same graph. To do this, we need to find analysis solutions for different values of the velocity ratio Vc over Vw. Beginning with the baseline analysis with a velocity ratio of about 3, we can plot FT, the propeller thrust, which corresponds to the winch line tension on this axis, against the propeller model total efficiency on this axis, which gives a point that falls right on the parachute model curve for VC over VW equals 3. We can plot similar points for the Blackbird analysis for velocity ratios of 1.5 and 2 by detuning the analysis changing the chain drive ratio off optimum to achieve lower velocity ratios. These off optimum Blackbird operating points result in lower overall system efficiency. But Blackbird's overall efficiency is limited to roughly 75% and a higher efficiency would be required to achieve a velocity ratio of 4, so we can't plot a point on the blue curve corresponding to a velocity ratio of 4. The two models predict the same performance for the same VC over VW, FT, and overall efficiency up to Blackbird's efficiency limit. In spite of their significantly different configurations, the two models predict the same result, suggesting that the underlying principles of operation are essentially the same. The primary difference is that the winch would be capable of higher efficiency than Blackbird's propeller. On the other hand, Blackbird is a practical design while the simplified model is only conceptual. Recall that Blackbird has a variable pitch propeller and its pitch can be varied during a run. The baseline analysis uses a pitch of 18.4 degrees, which was set for a good match to the record test data. Here's a plot of the velocity ratio of VC over VW versus propeller pitch over a pitch range of roughly 10 to 25 degrees and for wind velocities from 8 to 14 miles per hour. As with the chain drive ratio RC, there's a clear optimum pitch setting, and this optimum value is reasonably independent of wind velocity. The green circle is the baseline analysis operating point, suggesting that about a 2 degree increase in pitch could improve performance slightly. On the other hand, 
if the wheel slip criterion were valid, the 18.4 degree pitch might be wise to achieve best performance over a range of wind velocities. This pitch sensitivity might suggest that a reasonable approach to setting pitch is to select a pitch that appears to give maximum acceleration early in the run and leave this setting for the remainder of the run. It's important to note that these performance optimums are somewhat sensitive to several design parameters that might vary from Blackbird's actual design parameters, and performance is sensitive to the baseline propeller design, which probably varies from Blackbird's actual propeller. Still, these sensitivity predictions probably give a reasonable sense of Blackbird's behavior and sensitivity to important parameters. While we're thinking about propeller pitch, you probably notice that the baseline analysis parameters don't match the test data very well during the middle portion of the run. That might be because the wind velocity changed during the run, or that Rick made pitch changes during the run. Let's increase the pitch to 22 degrees. This provides a better early run match, but doesn't match the end run data very well, reaching the maximum velocity ratio later in the run. The analysis uses the same pitch and wind velocity for the entire run, so we really can't tell whether the variations are from wind or pitch variations, or both. Still, this gives an idea of the potential variability in details of the run. There's one more important data point that's worth checking. In another, more casually documented run, Blackbird achieved a maximum velocity of about 51 miles per hour and a wind varying from an estimated 14 to 28 miles per hour with an estimated average of 21 miles per hour. Setting the wind velocity to 21 miles per hour with the baseline propeller pitch, we exceed the slip limit, but reducing the drive ratio to just below this limit we still get a cart velocity of about 62 miles per hour and a velocity ratio of almost 3. Reducing the wind velocity to 16 miles per hour, we get a cart velocity of just over 50 miles per hour. Not knowing the exact wind velocity during the test, this seems a reasonable agreement with the recorded top cart velocity. There's also a report of an upper sprocket failure with high wind and cart velocity. If wheel stick slip had occurred, this could result in chain drive shock loading, which might result in high peak chain tensions and component loads. Just speculating. Let's check sensitivity to one more thing, the resistance force, FR. Increasing the bearing and wheel deformation effective coefficient of friction from 0.015 to 0.02, and the aerodynamic drag coefficient from 0.25 to 0.3, and optimizing RC, we get a resistance force of 14.3 pounds, a velocity ratio, VC over VW, of 2.74, and a poorer match to the test data. Still, the performance is close to the 2.8 velocity ratio of the test run, and the cart velocity is significantly greater than tailwind velocity. Exercising this model becomes sort of addictive, and I'll draw the line at this point. Bottom line, we'd have to change parameters dramatically to prevent achieving downwind faster than the wind. The only thing remaining is to discuss energy balance for the Blackbird analysis. Here's one way of looking at it. The propeller converts shaft power to thrust, FT. This thrust is applied to the cart through the propeller shaft at the cart velocity, VC. So the power into the system is FT times VC and the analysis predicts that this is 9.85 horsepower for the baseline conditions. This must equal the total system output power, which is composed of three contributions. The first is the propeller delivered power to the airstream, which is FT times the propeller inflow velocity, VP, and this is 6.59 horsepower. The second is the power lost to the resistance force, FR, which is applied to the cart at VC, so this power is FR times VC and equals 0.91 horsepower. The third is due to the efficiency losses of the chain drive and propeller, which is the wheel-to-ground reaction force. FDW times VC times the quantity 1 minus the total efficiency, which might be called the overall inefficiency. This loss is 2.35 horsepower. Adding these three power outputs, results in 9.85 horsepower, which equals the power input. Energy balances. Note that the difference between the power input due to thrust and the power delivered by the propeller equals FT times VW, since VP equals VC minus VW. 
This power, 3.26 horsepower, is the power provided by the tailwind velocity over the ground. This is the power needed to overcome loss due to the resistance force and system efficiency losses. Another way to look at this is to compare the propeller delivered power out of the system, FT times VP, to the power into the system due to the propeller thrust, FT times VC. The power out is proportional to VP, but the power in is proportional to VC, which is larger than VP. This velocity difference is a result of the tailwind. The system mechanism and propeller design expends power at a lower velocity than the velocity at which it recovers power, providing a net system power gain that covers the system power losses for cart velocity greater than the velocity of the wind. So what, if anything, have we proved? We certainly haven't found any technical reason why Blackbird shouldn't work. At the simplest level, purely kinematic descriptions illustrate that the tailwind increases the cart's velocity over the ground above that of the tailwind. We've seen that a mechanism that reacts a portion of the forward thrust at the drive wheels and has adequate overall system efficiency can react all resisting forces at cart velocities in the order of three times wind velocity. The conceptual winch and parachute model provides a slightly different and hopefully intuitive view of system operation and predicts essentially the same performance as the full Blackbird analysis. The full Blackbird analysis illustrates that the record Blackbird performance requires reasonable design optimization and that Blackbird's design appears well optimized. Bottom line, downwind faster than the wind is technically sound and has been verified by the record test run.